Well, I'm glad you, you're here with me. Come on in, spend a little time together today. Here it is. It's a great Thursday, chilly day, but for January, not too bad. Been an interesting time in our country in the last couple of days. Uh, probably still be that way. A lot of undercurrents of things going on. Uh, challenging, isn't it? Maybe it's always been that way. Maybe this is just the latest in a, a string of things that will always be there. I guess as long as the world is here, there will always be some challenges that come from the human element as we try to operate and live. I believe the best we've got is to listen to God, trust in God, and put into practice the things he shows. Anyway, come on in today for a little while. Let's think about something together. You know, I think it was in 1966, if I remember right, 1966, thereabouts, uh, and all I didn't check the dates on it, so about 1966, my father decided to take us on a, a fairly long trip. We were going to make our way to Washington, D.C. Along the way, we stopped at a few places like Springfield, Illinois, and Gettysburg, Harper's Ferry, and we went to Washington, D.C. to view the sights. And there were a lot of memorable things on that trip. I think Gettysburg and, um, Gettysburg and, and, and of course, there in Washington, D.C. and in the area, but it's in Arlington Cemetery. Gettysburg and Arlington Cemetery probably stood out in my mind as much as any did. I can't say that they were the only things. There are a lot of others, but that's for another time. And each place I felt like I was caught in a, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say a time warp, but there was a, a sense of, uh, a sense of somberness, a sense of reverence that was there. And I know there are many other battlefields, and I've visited some of those over the years. But as we were there at Gettysburg and then later at Arlington, I couldn't help but remember or think about what had transpired and what was brought about in the shaping of this country and the conflict, especially of civil war. You see, my father was a, a, a something of a history buff. He loved reading and studying history and especially the history of the era of the Civil War. He was, a, he was a great reader after Abraham Lincoln in his life, Robert E. Lee and others. And, and I almost hate to admit some of them because, you know, today it's kind of unpopular to think about them. But they were people of their time and with their flaws and their strengths and, uh, and all of that. But I think about the somberness that caught me. And let me mention especially Arlington Cemetery. If you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's a place you ought to visit someday, and it'll, it'll get your attention. For as you look out over the, the hilly area there, there are things that catch your attention. One of them is Lee's house. And you can study and understand the events that brought it about and why Arlington Cemetery is where it is in part. But the Lee Custis house that's there the memorial that's there, or the museum that's there, and so forth, and the gravesite of some notable people, and especially John Kennedy. I think the thing, two things that caught my attention, or really three things that caught my attention more than any other, was John Kennedy's gravesite and all the things that are there, and the so-called eternal flame that is burning there, the tomb of the unknown soldier, and watching the changing of the guard and the guards that were there and, and recognizing the tribute to men who have died in wars. And the other thing that caught my attention is just the row upon row upon row upon row of those white tombstones. And which you, when you look at them from a distance, they all look alike. But when you get up close to them, you find particular names and dates etched on them. That's true of a lot of the national cemeteries where the military are buried. But it's truly impressive as you look out on the hills there in that beautiful area near the Potomac River in Arlington. Amazing cemetery. But you know, each one of those lives 
Each one of those lives was lived, maybe had family. Many of them died young, some of them in war while they were still young men. Some of them lived much fuller lives, had, had wives and children, maybe grandchildren and so forth and families. Some of them accomplished great feats in their lives. Some of them military, some of them in ordinary civil, uh, secular life. Some of them maybe just almost unknowable. And you look at them from a distance and there it's there it is. Then of course, as I mentioned, there's the graveside of John Kennedy. It's quite a bit there. Things you can read, portions of speeches, if I remember right, statements that are there. There was the flame that was kept burning. And I I think about here this man who died in the midst of life and was brought down by an assassin's bullet left with us a reflection. I don't know what his life would have been had he lived longer and continued in his presidency. I don't know how we would look at him today. But we look and we say he left a mark on our country. He left something for us to remember. Of 20th century presidents, he may be one that stands out more than others because perhaps of his assassination, but he also was a great speech giver. And some of the conflicts of his time are remembered even to today. What I, I guess I'm getting at is that from a distance, many may not notice. It may seem like one grave past another, but when you get up close, you find there was a life that was represented there. And what you and I want in our lives is to leave in the world something that when people get up close, not necessarily shaking the world up or making great differences in the broad spectrum of things, but, but up close to those who would remember us and those who would be affected by us. We want to leave something. We call it legacy, and I've talked about that before. But I've thought about how, when they're up close, what are they going to see and what are they going to read? I think that's what Peter was trying to get at. In the 15th verse of 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, Moreover, as he said, I'm going to put off this life, this tent, as he calls it, as the Lord has told me I'm going to. But in verse 15, he says, Moreover, with that in mind, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Think about how important that is. It may not affect the broad spectrum of the world, but it may affect those who knew you best. Wives, husbands, children, grandchildren. So that they remember. I think one of the great ambitions, and as we make resolutions in this fairly new year, make a resolution that while we're alive, we're going to tell them what we believe and what we hold on to and help them build a real faith in their lives. Not just leave it up to them to build it, but help them build a faith in their lives. And then let's leave them a remembrance, something that affects them after this time. I'm not talking about money so much. You know, people are always worried about their estates and money they leave by, but it leaves them something of ourselves. And that's what Peter was talking about, to have a reminder that long after we're gone, they'll have a reminder of that which had the greatest value to us. At a distance, it may not be noticed, but up close to those who know you best, leave that reminder of what was really important to you. That's a good resolution for this new year. Hey, I'm glad you were with me today. Let's encourage one another. Let's hold together. Let's love one another. And let's pray for the very best things in the days ahead. Thank you for being with me today, and we'll share some more things further down the road.